and headed for work but I came on here today because I, I have some things on my heart that God telling me that I need to share with y'all because to be honest with you I don't even know when the next time I'm gonna be able to pick this camera up because I done took so much overtime from this job but I'm grateful for it but this is one of the main reasons of why I say a nine to five can steal your life but it's all on the person who's working if you have dreams if you have aspirations if you have dreams and things that you are trying to accomplish in life a nine to five can sometimes not say be a burden but it can get in the way but it can also be a blessing because it can fund the dream as long as you have a means to escape now for those who love their nine to five so be it not here to bash it and y'all know I done said this multiple times I'm not here to bash it do what you have to do for my dreamers do what you have to do so you can get up out of there because this job is taking my entire time entire time I barely had enough time to do what I was supposed to do before I got the job my clients are complaining telling me to quit but I know I'm on a mission I'm on a serious mission and that's what's on my heart this morning to talk to you guys about first off let me ask you a question because y'all know I'm 52 years old Yes, I am 52 years old. I'm recently divorced and I'm starting over. I'll be gone on my divorce like three years. You might as well say four, whatever. But I have no problem with starting over. Because I'm at the point in my life where my friends and family are worried and concerned about me. You know, I know there is nothing in these streets. This is why I don't casually date. This is why I stay to myself pretty much because I know my worth and I know that my time is valuable and I know what I have to offer and I know what I bring to the plate. Do you know your value? If you don't know your value, sis, brother, love yourself more. Get in tune with God so that you can see and adapt to how valuable you truly are. So my question to you is, are you afraid of getting old? Every time you look in the mirror, you see something different. Every time you put your clothes on for my ladies who are going through menopause, your, your stomach is just another inch bigger to where you can't button your pants. Do you see the crow's feet coming in your eyes? When you stretch your forehead, you see the wrinkles on your forehead. Do you? Do you feel anxious? Like time is on a speed dial and you feeling like you haven't accomplished nothing yet? And you you beating yourself up because you feel like you're supposed to be further along than what you are? Anybody that's 50 plus and starting over, I know what you're dealing with. I know what you're dealing with. But I'm here to tell you, do not let the enemy to put a rush on your life. Because wherever you are is where you are supposed to be. I can sit here and tell y'all tons of bad stories. We can have story time out this world. For the last 30 years, my life has been in turmoil. In between relationships and my son. You see, the enemy know your files. The enemy know what buttons he can push. The enemy knows wh where he can get you at 
if he can't get you in this place. The enemy know that I love God. He know that he cannot convince me that God isn't real and that he will not show up. I know it because he's done it too many times. But he also know my weaknesses. He also know that I'm the type of person I like taking relationships and making them build a bear relationships. What do I say with that? I know that this person may have issues, but I, I find myself seeing the good in them and saying, yeah, I can fix that. No, you can't. No, you can't. No, you can't. When you have spurl kids to where you made mistakes in your past and got with the wrong person and had kids with, and now you see those traits in that person who you had a child with, in your child and you're trying to fix them with love and overcompensating and giving them whatever they want thinking that's gonna fix them no it don't no it don't the only answer to everything that i'm sitting here telling you guys is the lord above is god within himself you have to ask god to come into your life and see what it is in you that's causing you to keep making the same mistakes. The same mistakes. What type of vibration are you on that will keep you uh, drawing the same energy to you? What are you attracting? Now, let me just say this. I know that I'm a beautiful woman. Inside and out. But narcissists play on it. But at the same time, I'm smart, I'm wise. They can't run game. I sit back and I can still be the chosen one. I never go looking. Cause see when a man finding a wife, he find it a good thing. So you let that man find you. Me, I was always the one that picked and I chose. I can go years and months without a relationship. I'm talking like, Literally, without a relationship, no phone calls, no dating, no sex, no nothing. And that does not bother me. Why? Because I'm covered. Because I'm covered. You see, when you covered by God and you have a, a marvelous relationship with him and he's in your everyday life. And when you go in these streets, you are invisible to predators. You are invisible to people that prey on you. You're invisible. And I say this because I try to get my friends and my family to understand that. It's not that I don't want a relationship, but I'm invisible. I'm invisible until God allow me to be seen. I can put on the best of the best of the best and walk in the finest restaurants, the finest uh, uh, lounges or whatever. No one will talk to me. No, nobody would talk to me. And you would think they would. They stare. They stare. And they stare with intimidation. Like, oh, no. I know I got to have my ish together to talk to her. Oh, no. Like, I, I, ain't, I, I ain't on her level to be able to talk to her. That's the look that they give. That's the look that they give. And at the same time, I'm fine with that because I don't want to be by Lord, I don't want to be bothered. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. I don't want to be bothered. I am so detached and turned off. But that's how I am. And I have to ask God to pray for me when it comes to that. Because I can find myself going years and years being comfortable alone. And that's the thing, y'all. Y'all have to find the comfort in yourself. And don't allow the enemy to trick you to make you feel like in order for you to be whole, you have to have somebody. It's always good to have somebody in your life. It's always good to grow old with somebody. I still believe in black love. I will be married again. Oh, yes, but this time I'm waiting on God to send it before I go back and pick up myself, creating a builder bell. My whole thing is what I'm saying is, people, love yourself enough 
to know your value, to know your worth, to know that you are worth waiting on, to know that you are worth waiting for, to know that you are that you are worth waiting on. God to sing you exactly what's designed for you. Life ain't over with yet. As long as you waking up every day and you have the strength in your body to get dressed, to put some clothes on, then that means you have another day to work on you to make it better. Don't let the enemy rush you because I'm telling you, had God blessed me with everything that I'm walking toward with, had God blessed me with everything that's in my heart, which been in my heart for years, but my life wasn't in line for what he had for me. My life wasn't in line. I was ready for it, but my life wasn't in line for what he had for me. My thing is, if he would have given it to me then, I would have messed it up. Just like I done messed it up throughout the years. I done had some beautiful runs in my, in my career. And right now, I don't want to say that I'm falling out of love with it. I just want more. But I know he placed me here for a reason, you guys. He placed me here for a reason because me doing hair is not only me doing hair. I minister to these women. I pour into these women. Half the time they come here with stuff on their heart and they leave feeling lifted. That's why God have me planted here and I can't escape it. I've tried and I've tried and I've tried to find jobs or something that would make me feel like it's worth being at and stuff. No, it's not because I'm miserable at this job. I told you my ego feel bruised while I'm there, but I know I'm there for a reason because God is humbling me. He's humbling me. He's humbly, he's humbling me in a place of slow down, Shaquita. When I say it's boring in there, it's boring in there. I have no time but to talk to him. Now, yeah, I already know that I have to spend time with God. I already know that I do spend time with God. What I am piss poor at is reading my Bible more. And I ask him to convict me of that, to let me know, look, it's, heck t t it's time to pick it up. It's time to pick it up. Because whatever your success is that you are believing him for, it's not going to happen until you start believing in him for it. It's not going to happen. You can do all this stuff in your own strength, in your own will, in your own might. It's not going to work until you start allowing him to run it for you. And if you don't have a relationship with God, then don't even worry about it. Yes, your consistency will make things happen. Your consistency will allow you to see some progress. But at the same time, the enemy gives you rewards just like God do. God's stuff comes slow because it's a lesson while you're on the path. It's a lesson before the blessing. The enemy going to give it to you fast. Because you think you're doing it in your own might and in your own will. And you are. Because see, anything that's outside of God's will... You have to contain it outside of God's will. Anything inside his will is sweet. It's sweet. It's sweatless. It comes easy. You can manifest it in your sleep. And the, and the sad part about me that sickens me, I know these things. I know these things. I know these things. And I have allowed myself to not put it into play. By trying to put a rush on what God has for me because I feel like time is winding up. Or I feel like I'm getting old. Or I beat myself up because I feel like I should have been there 30 years ago. Or I beat myself up because I feel like, what am I doing wrong? Him. He is what you're doing wrong. Because while I'm being humbled on this job, and God knows that my walk with him has been for years. But while I'm being humbled on this job, stuff is starting to happen. Stuff is starting to turn around. Stuff, I'm starting to see little small things. It's almost like me watching a flower blossom slowly. That's how I feel. That's how I feel.
But I, I, I don't want to rant too much, you guys, because I want to come on here and I just want to inspire you guys. I, I want to I wanna encourage you guys more than ever because I'm just like you. I'm a regular, regular woman just like you. My life is simple. My life is not hard. I'm not complicated. This is not the turn up channel, you guys. This is the laid back, chill, let's chop it up. Let's talk about life. Let's talk about business. Let's share some things with one another. Let's inspire one another. Let me encourage you and let you know it's never too late. I do not care how old you are. Like they say, Colonel Sanders got his victory at the age 65. And I'm so happy that they have channels for us now, 50 plus and older. I done found one on TikTok, 40 plus and older. Don't get me wrong. I love my babies who I normally watch. They inspire me. You know, I get great ideas from them, but they're kids. I want to talk to somebody who can relate to what I've been through. I want to talk to somebody who can understand my past. But like I say, I don't want to trauma bond with y'all. Because I have enough story time to have a hundred sequels. Please believe that. And, and throughout this journey, I will share some of those hardships and, and life events. I don't, I don't feel comfortable with it. Because I made a promise to myself that in any relationship going forward, I'm not talking about that. Because you see, when you constantly talk about that, you keep yourself living in it. Now, there's nothing wrong with sharing your testimony. I'm talking about chopping it up with friends to where that's all y'all do is talk about what was. That's why I don't have a lot of friends to this day. That's why I walked out of a lot of relationships with women to this day because we were trauma bonding. I don't want to trauma bond with you. I don't want to get on here and tell you about the first time when I left home, the what, what this man brought me through, then how I met my kid's dad, and then what he brought me through, and then uh, what I experienced in my 14-year marriage that I just left, and what he brought me through. I, I don't want to talk about that. I don't want to talk about that. I want to talk about whatever you've been through. Just know that it's okay and you will be fine and everything is all right if you lay it at the feet of God. I'm not on here trying to preach to y'all or uh, uh, become no pastor or uh, no sermonist to y'all. I just want you to know that in order for you to get out of the rut that you in, put your focus on him. Put your focus on him. I don't care about the dream. I don't care about the business. Long as you touching it, you're fine. But I need for you before you touch anything, you talk to him first. You pray to him first. Before you even try to call yourself doing whatever video, you talk to him first. You pray to him first. You ask him to give you the wisdom of what to say. What need to be heard today? What is it, what is it that you need me to do for you today? I don't know where it's going to work. I tried it all other ways. I tried it all other ways. And the sad part about it, I've been hearing this for years. I've been hearing this for years. And don't you let this new age trick you into feeling like, okay, the atmosphere and the affirmations, they wish they are true. They are true. And they do work. But you better know the real deal behind those affirmations. You better understand the truth behind those affirmations. And the truth is that you can say that stuff till you turn blue in the face. If you don't understand that God is the true rewarder, it won't work. It won't work. Manifestations, affirmations, they are all real. Scripting, they are all real. Write it down. Write the vision. Make it plain upon tables for he may run that reading. Habakkuk 2 and 2 is real because if God promised it in his word, it have to show up because God is not a man that will lie. It have to show up. But if you're doing it in your own will, you will never see it. You will never see See it. You can have affirmations all across your window in your bathroom. You can have them on your bed to where that's the first thing you see when you wake up. But if you do not know the truth behind them, you will never see it. And the truth behind them is you have to have a relationship with God. 
and stop rushing your life feeling like you're wasting your time. No, you're running out of time because we don't know how much time we have left. And maybe it's meant for me to see all my rewards when I get to heaven. Or maybe he will allow me to see them on the land of the living. Whichever one, I'm fine with. But I'm not going to stop. And I'm going to go to my grave until I see it. I'm going to go to my grave trying until it show up. I'm going to go to my grave. I'm not going to say chasing. I'm going to go to my grave trying to accomplish what I know that he have in store for me until I see it. And if I see it at 60, then I see it at 60. Then it just was meant for me to get it at 60. If I see it next year, then that means it was just meant for me to have it next year. If it show up tomorrow, however long it takes, that's the thing. You have to be willing and okay to know that however long it takes, I'm willing to wait. Because if you're not willing to wait, you're wasting your time. You, he ain't no genie left. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, Jesus. Come on. No, because he know your motives. He know your thoughts. He know what's in your heart. You can't run game on him. You can't. He's the game master. He don't, you can't, you can't run game on him. I'm sorry. Stop trying. And even though in your head you're not trying, even though in your head you mean well, your intentions are good, but at the same time, you're trying to rush him. You can't rush him because his timing is not out of time. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. So take the rush off of you. Take the rush off of you. And just focus on him. Keep your eyes on the prize. The prize is Jesus. The prize is our Lord. The prize is spending time with him. Woo! I feel him as I'm saying that. The time, the prize is him, y'all. You can't make none of this stuff happen without him. When I go to this job, I told y'all, I pour into these babies when I'm there. And everybody's mission on life is to pour into somebody. When I'm on this job, these kids don't see no 52 year old mama they see themselves they see themselves because a lot of time I have to like oh, hold up you're cursing too much don't do that around me oh I'm sorry Miss Taylor I'm sorry Miss Taylor don't get that comfortable around me I know I talk to y'all I laugh with y'all I chop it up with y'all but I still need for you to respect me as you respect your mama if you don't do this with your mama you're not gonna do this with me and I don't care if you do do this with your mama you're not gonna do this with me don't do all that cursing around me my kids don't do all that cursing around me and my kids older than y'all so when I have to put them in their place, then they hear the authority, they see the authority, and they don't see the youth no more. But I say that to say that when you walk with God, you, he restores your youth. He restores your youth. Yeah. You grow slow in the word of God. You grow slow. Your life speeds up when you're living in the world. You can be 40 looking 65. You can be 50 looking 70. You don't want to do that. You want to restore your youth as much as you can. Now, don't get it twisted. I look in that mirror every day and see myself changing. Do I feel like uh, I'm as pretty as I was when I was 30 and when I was 40? No. Do I feel ugly? No. Do I still feel beautiful? Yes. I'm just in a different bracket with it now. Because I see some 50 year olds, I'll be like, what you doing? What you doing? And I know genes and genetics and all that type of stuff play a role, but at the same time, take care of yourself. My channel name is Fit Fab Over 50 for a reason. And it's not because I'm a gym guru, even though I love going to the gym and I need to be my big butt in there right now because this job is still in that away for me. But I don't use that as an excuse because I do my laps while I'm in there. But see, the boredom will keep me snacking all day. Uh, stop, enemy, you are a lie. But recognize his work when you see it. Even though I'm not a gym guru, but I do practice eating right. And not just to stay fabulous, fit, to stay alive. To fight high blood pressure. 
to fight sugar diabetes. All the stuff that we deal with when we cross over to the age 50. Yeah, or 40. To fight, to learn how to live with your menopause. To, to fight the night sweats and everything that come along with it. Fabulous says, stay feeling beautiful. Stay feeling beautiful. Put clothes on just because, even though you know you're not in these streets, put your clothes on just because. Stop walking around here with bonnets on your head all day. Stop walking around here with your hair scattered all day. I don't care. Slick it back in the bun. Go to a beauty store. Get your fake drawstring ponytail. Put a little light foundation on. Put some doggone lip gloss on. Come on. Put some clothes on. It don't have to be no after five gown. It don't have to be nothing shimmery and glamorous trying to impress people on this platform who don't care. They don't care. And a lot of them is insecure. That's why they do that. A lot of them is going through things. That's why they do that. Love yourself enough to know your value and your worth to where you feel you don't have to impress nobody. Long as you feel good, it's all that matters. Because all it takes is for one person to start something and then the whole world start doing it. You be your own trendsetter. I told you I break rules all the time. I don't follow what the world do. I'm unique. I'm a unicorn out here. Please know that. Please know that I have my own lane. So what I want to tell you guys is before I cut this camera off, if you fought it and up and you feeling alone and you feeling like you want to be with somebody and you know that the dating scene is crap, just know that God has somebody for you. And please be willing to wait on them. Use this downtime as the time to get yourself together. Stop feeling so alone to where you just deal with anybody to say you have somebody and you see all the signs. He got small kids. He not finished with her if he got small kids. He not finished with her or if he finished with her, she ain't finished with him. You can believe that. I would not be dating no man with small kids. <laughs> Homework for me is over with. Grandkids, different story. Your kids, absolutely not. Don't be stacking bodies while you waiting on God to bless you with your black love. Don't stack bodies. Because every time you give it a chance or take a risk on Henry and Larry, they leaving stuff behind with you. Now you got to deal with that. Now you wondering why you got an attitude. Now you wondering why you mad. Why, now you wondering why you, you smelling or uh, feeling irritated. Come on. Come on. It's the time where you supposed to know better. It's the time to where you made all those mistakes in your 20s and in your 30s. Past 40, you ain't got no more excuses to be making mistakes out here, little mama. You're not. You don't. And don't don't, don't have the hood to start coming out in me. Don't. Don't. Because don't. I'm trying to be serious with y'all right now. Don't stack bodies while you waiting on God. Don't do that. Don't do that. Love yourself enough to allow yourself to be pure. And then when in your waiting, don't just give all that time that you done waited on God to know anybody. Don't do that. Don't do that. And understand the trickery of the devil because he was sending that tall, dark, handsome. He was sending that one who got money and he driving this and he's driving that and he got three, four, five businesses, etc., etc., etc. He going to send them. He going to send them because he know what you're looking for. He know exactly what you're looking for. Understand it. And there ain't no problem with talking to him on the phone. But the first time you see that sign, chop it off. Chop it off. Chop it off like, a, like you're chopping the head of a snake off. Because that's exactly what you're doing. Killing the enemy right then and there. We don't have five and six years to waste no more. We don't have that. We're in our last days. Time is moving fast. And our latter years are supposed to be our better years. Our kids are grown, gone, living their life. Now you know how to live. Now you know how to live without being, you know, without making all the mistakes and the foolery. And if you're at this age and you still making foolish mistakes, then sister and brother, I pray for you. I pray that you get mature enough to understand when it's time to grow up. I pray you do. 
I pray you do. But for my sisters, love yourself. Love yourself enough to know that you're going to wait on God and allow him to bring you what you need. Because it's not over. It's not over. Because the stories I can share with y'all, you will be like, Shaquita, how would you ever want to be in a relationship anymore? Because I trust God. And all those relationships is what I caused. Because I handpicked them. They didn't handpick me. I handpicked them. Because I'm that confident woman to feel like I ain't got to worry about Larry stepping to me. I can step to Larry and I know Larry going to bite every time. Every time. Because I got so much to offer. But Shaquita ain't picking nothing no more. If I have to sit here 40 more years by myself, no number, no this, no sex, I don't care because my focus going to be on God and then that don't bother me. That don't bother me. And when Larry or uh, Henry or uh, whomever God have present himself, like the Bible say, when a man finded a wife, he find it a good thing. And what I can say that I'm proud of, at the age 52, I'm not damaged material. I'm not. I still hold a lot of value. With two baby daddies, one husband, and the one before them. Because it's all been within this 35-year run. From one to the next. 10, 10, 10. 10, 10, 10, 5. Yeah, that's right. That's right. But the moral to the story is I just wanted to come on here and say I love you guys. I hope that what I have said inspired somebody and gave you courage and hope. And I hope uh, that you can take whatever I say and let that resonate in your heart. Love yourself. You are beautiful. You are worth waiting on. You are worth waiting for. Allow God to hand pick what you need specifically for you. He has someone strictly designed for you. And leave Larry and Henry and Melvin alone. Talk to God. You you want to talk to somebody on the phone? Talk to God. Talk to God. Call him. He love you. He'll never stop loving you. But I love y'all. Have a good day. I got to go to work. Bye.